Hello, it's author Tanya Duncan Ellis of the Sophie Washington series with another episode of Write This, my author interview show. And I, I'm excited every time I have these shows, but today is even more special because the guest is going to be talking about NaNoWriMo or National Novel Writing Month. And this is an event where aspiring authors and authors all around the world get together to write um, a 50,000 word document. And um, the guest that's going to be coming, Lisa Stringfellow, wrote her book, her debut novel that's scheduled to come out early next year during NaNoWriMo. So I would love to pick her brain and get some information about um, what her process was and how she planned things out to um, write that novel. So we're going to be having her on. And I've participated personally in NaNoWriMo in the past, but it's kind of been a half-hearted attempt. I, did, I tried really maybe once seriously, and it was kind of half-hearted. I kind of hopped on the bandwagon, and I did get a lot of good words in, so I was happy with that. But I would love to plan it out and really go full force with the event. So... Um, I'll be happy to learn from her today. And so we're just waiting for her to join on and to get information from Lisa Stringfellow. And hope that everything is going well with you and your areas and that, um, that things are going according to plan. I know we've got some aspiring authors that tune in. So maybe you might want to participate in NaNoWriMo. And I've gotten questions from many about how to go about writing a novel. We've had a lot of people who have um, DM'd me or sent me messages in my inbox on Instagram asking me about steps to take to write a novel. So this will be a great time to get some tips from Lisa Stringfellow on how she planned out her debut novel. And so we'll just wait for her to come in. I see some of my friends from the Own Voices Book Challenge here and appreciate you tuning in once again for the show. And I know that Lisa and I had communicated just a couple minutes ago before I went live. So I know that she's she's hanging on. I'm not sure where she is, but she'll be here. But while we're waiting for her, does anyone have any questions of me? I'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. So if you want to cue those up or questions that you might have of her for NaNoWriMo, if you want to put those in the comments, then I'll have those ready to ask her when she comes in. And then um, if you just got in, I said earlier, NaNoWriMo is an acronym or short version for National Novel Writing Month which takes place each November. And authors from all around the world come in or they're at their own homes or wherever they are, but they get together as a community and attempt to write 50,000 word documents, which would equate into a 200 page novel. So it's a good way for people to push themselves with that community to write a novel if they've never done so, or to complete manuscripts that they're working on. And so I see my friend Neha there, happy to see you and excited about all that you've been doing. She is a coder and um, a book enthusiast who supports literacy throughout social media. So she's a young girl that I'm very proud of and happy to see. So I'm not sure where Lisa is. She, um, hi. Uh, she told me this was her first time using Instagram Live, so she, this is new for her, so I'm hoping that she's not having technical difficulties joining in. But let me see. I'm going to try to, um, oh yeah, yeah, you're welcome. Let me send this on here because I'm not sure where she is. Let's see. Okay, there she is, yeah. To join in, because she has, um, she's active on Instagram, but she's a newbie to the Instagram Live. And I'm not sure if she's having difficulty getting on here and joining us. 
But now, while we're waiting, anybody got any questions? I see we have the Literacy Whisperer here, too. Thank you for coming. She is another person who is, well, she's a, an educator, a prior or retired educator, who has a, a great platform promoting literacy with children. And on her page, she gives, I think it's K.P. Carter writes. She gives all kinds of great information about literacy. So ch please check her out. I tuned in a little bit um, last week, and it was really great. Okay, so I see Lisa here. Lisa, I sent you an invite to join. Let me see. Okay, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Okay, so she's on, and we're ready to start. Okay, and it's saying you're unable to join. Let's see. I'm accepting. I wonder what's going on here. And maybe I'll send it again. You know how these things go. Okay, I said, yay! Okay, good, you're here. Hey, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing well. I think I had it backwards. I was in another live sending you an invite. <laughs> so oh, I okay. <laughs> All right, well, I'm so happy to see you. And I have really been looking forward to having you on because I've always wanted to do NaNoWriMo, but I never, I, I tried it one time and I wasn't really organized or anything. So I really want to pick your brain and get some tips on what you did when you wrote your book. Yeah. Um, so my book um, is A Comb of Wishes. Um, it's coming out um, next year, February 8th, uh, yeah. 2022. And it was a NaNoWriMo book. Um, so I wrote the, the first draft of it for NaNoWriMo 2013. Oh, so ooh. it's quite a while <laughs> ago. And... Um, but it was, um, I've done NaNoWriMo about eight times, nine times, I guess, coming wow. up this year. And um, so it was my first win. So the, you know, the goal is to get words on a page. It's not necessarily to win. You still are a success if you did more writing in November than you did when it's not. But, right. um, but yeah, but I did get to 50,000 words that year. So that was exciting. That's awesome. Now, I kind of jumped the gun here because I was just so excited about NaNoWriMo. <laughs> Can you introduce yourself? Tell us where you're from and a little bit about your background. Sure. Um, so I'm Lisa Stringfellow. I am a middle grade author um, with my debut coming out next year, as I mentioned. I'm also a middle school English teacher, and I live in Boston, Massachusetts. Oh. Um, and so, yeah, that's where I'm calling in from today. Okay, I didn't know you were from Boston. So, yes. is it cold there now? It is. It was a nice day today. It was in the seventies today, but uh, Ooh, that's it's nice. starting to. Yeah, I saw my breath this morning, so it's starting to get that <laughs> little bit chilly. <laughs> yeah, I had visited Boston like maybe three, four, year, five years ago, and I'd never been there before. And I thought, I think I looked at crime shows or police shows <laughs> and thought of it, but it's such a beautiful city. Yeah, there's a lot of history here, but uh, my uh, my mom's from down south, so my mom's from Alabama, so uh, oh, okay. I have a lot of connections there, too. <laughs> That's good. So you started with NaNoWriMo in 2013. What, mm -hmm. how did you um, start participating? What led you to participate in NaNoWriMo? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I actually had heard of NaNoWriMo um, maybe a year or two before that. Um, so I know my very first attempt to do it was in 2012. Um, but shortly before that was when I started getting interested in writing um, as more than just a hobby and maybe just try to start um, looking into publishing. Um, I had finished my, uh, gone back to school kind of later in life. I'd been teaching for a while that went back for my master's and um, kind of got re-sparked to think about writing a book. And one of the things that I did first was start to seek out as much information about writing as I could and writing crafts and writing organizations. And so I joined a critique group and all of that. And I heard about NaNoWriMo and I thought, well, that might be a neat way to, you know, just get started and, there was a whole community um, that I saw that was there. And so I, I started a draft in 2012 um, and didn't get very far. <laughs> I think mm. I got maybe maybe 7,000 words or something into that, which again is something, but um, I didn't really know what I was doing <laughs> and uh, mm. I had not learned a lot. And so 
in that period, I also learned that there was a, a young writers program uh, with NaNoWriMo. And so I decided that I would do NaNoWriMo again the next year in 2013, but I would do it with my students. So mm -hmm. I made it part of the curriculum. Um, there's a, a website just geared towards young writers and lots of resources there. And so I told all my fifth graders that, you know, guess what? You know, it's October, you know, 15th. We're going to write a novel next month. And, you know, their mm -hmm. mouths all dropped and eyes bugged out. <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> but um, then I said, you know, I'm going to do the same thing that I want you guys to do. I said, you know, my goal, because the adult goal is 50,000 words in the 30 days. You know, so I said, I've got to write 50,000 words if I want to try to win. I said, but your goal can be a goal that you set for yourself. So I gave them a minimum. I gave them like a 4,000 word goal for the month, which is, you know, about a little less than a thousand words for every grade level. <laughs> so they're in, mm -hmm. we're in fifth grade. So I said, that's very easy and manageable. I broke it down to them by day. I said, it's only 250 words a day, if that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and so that really motivated them. So they, you know, we would dedicate part of our class time every day in the month of November to write. And, you know, they'd all sit there at their computers and I would be sitting at my desk writing and we would share what we were writing. So that was really kind of a fun um, experience to get started. And those students who were in my class in 2013 um, just graduated last this oh. past spring. So they're college freshmen this year, but, uh, but it's kind of neat. Cool. To... I would have loved to be in your English class. Uh, <laughs> so fun. Yeah. That is awesome. So you've really, what I've learned from doing this show is it's definitely a marathon, not a sprint when it comes to the writing game, because all the people you see are like 10 year overnight success. You know, everyone has worked <laughs> so hard for so yeah. many years. Yeah, that's definitely true. And, um, you know, when I tell my students now, you know, that this book, you know, that they know the, the students that I have now know that it's coming out and they've seen my art, you know, and they ask me like, when did I write this book? And I'm like, you know, first draft was 2013. And you guys were just like, you know, barely around. My my students are 10 and 11. So oh they were goodness. babies <laughs> when, when I started it. Um, and then I also say to them, you know, guess how many times I've revised this novel? Is it the same book that I wrote when I started? And they're like, uh, I don't know, three, <laughs> four, <laughs> like higher. <laughs> so right. it's a lesson for them in, in that too, and kind of what the work is that goes into being a writer. So when you wrote um, different, you know, when you participated in other years, were you using the same manuscript or did you write different books? No. Um, so one of the, the rules, if you follow the rules, um, is you should always start something new for NaNoWriMo. Mm -hmm. So for all of the years, um, I've done it up until I think maybe last year, um, I've always started something new. Um, okay. So like whether, you know, I have all of my little, the, on the websites for NaNoWriMo, they have projects. So I have all of my projects and it keeps all the date, all the data and all the statistics. So I can actually even pull up, you know, what my word count was when I wrote this book. And I point out to my students that for much of the month of November, um, I was behind. And then mm -hmm. um, we had Thanksgiving. I always love Thanksgiving break because for me I usually don't travel very far so it's like extra writing time so they could see on my my chart my spike <laughs> in my word count over yeah. the Thanksgiving break because I had more time to write um, mm -hmm. but yeah I can look back at all of those projects um, last year COVID was hard uh, and just mm -hmm. focusing and um, so the last couple of years I've kind of been what they call a rebel a nano rebel <laughs> where you you kind of break the rules a little bit and maybe you take something that um, you've worked on and work on either revising or rewriting it. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm going to try, I haven't quite decided yet if I'm going to be a rebel again this year, or if I'm going to try to start something new. Um, the nice thing about starting something new is you don't have to, you know, necessarily complete the manuscript, but whatever you end up with is, you know, starting ground for something that you can continue to work on after November. Now, do you find that people plan ahead of time? Or do they just, do you just start right in November? Or do you plan it's, to plot out anything? It's a mixture. I think there are all sorts of people who um, have like either 
they're they're plotters and they plan everything. They have an outline um, and they you know they figured out their characters. And then they're the pansters who just kind of sit down on November first and just whatever comes into their head. And then I think I'm a little bit in between. Um, mm -hmm. So they have sometimes call those plotsters. So mm -hmm. like I have you know some ideas of like what my story is going to be about. I'm I. I'm not necessarily an outliner, but I might write down like some like rough bullet points of, you know, kind of a, a journey in the story. Um, and then I just go. So not, I'm not an, like a, a heavy planner um, mm -hmm. so far yet. Although the hard part with that is then the revision takes a little bit more work because <laughs> you have to clean up kind of where you went astray. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, what is the storyline of your upcoming book? Um, so A Comb of Wishes is a fantasy. Um, it's set in the Caribbean. Um, so I mentioned my mom is from Alabama, but my, my father is from um, the West Indies. He's from um, Barbados. And mm -hmm. so a lot of this book is based on um, kind of like the, the culture and the music and the food and everything that I grew up with, with my dad's side of the family. Um, mm -hmm. So my main character um, is on an island uh, named St. Rita, which is fictional island based on Barbados <laughs> and um, <laughs> she um, she's struggling at the beginning of the book she, her mom has recently passed away and um, she's really grieving that she's feeling guilt guilty about things that she said to her mother um, and then she, the thing that she wishes she could have most is, is her mom back and just to, to make amends um, but she can't and so while she's on the beach with one of her friends um, she hears this mysterious sound kind of calling to her and she doesn't know what it is and she follows it and finds a box kind of an old battered box eventually when she does get it open there's a, a beautiful hair comb so that's the comb that you see the girl holding in the book um, mm -hmm. and when she touches it it links her to this mermaid who um, is kind of a wrathful mermaid and she feels like the Keela, my main character, has stolen this and she wants it back but she's um, kind of bound by these rules of magic and so for Keela to give it back, um, she'll exchange a wish for her comb back. And so Keela agrees to that. And of course, the thing that she wishes for that she wants most in, in the world is to have her mom back. Um, so she makes that wish and mm -hmm. magic has costs and things don't always turn out the way she imagines them to be. Um, so that's kind of the premise of the book. That sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. I can't wait to read this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a lot about family and, and love and kind of, you know, dealing with your grief and then the people who are there in your life to support you and mm -hmm. magic. <laughs> now, do you primarily write fantasy and magic or? I do. That's what I loved to read when I was growing up. I was a huge reader. I was, you know, the well-known to the librarians at my school library and, um, you know, read my way through, you know, the Narnia Chronicles and all mm -hmm. sorts of other fantasies, you know, King Arthur and all sorts of things. And, um, you know, I've got some ideas for some other types of books in the future, but, um, but right now I'm enjoying writing fantasy. Yeah, well, that I really love that. And I love the representation and the diversity in that fantasy realm. And even with the girl character. So that's really cool. Yeah, well, and I, I say sometimes that, you know, I'm, I'm trying to create these characters who are kind of like the what I wish I would have been able to read more about when I was a kid. So kind of a, you know, the brown skin kid off saving the world, um, mm -hmm. which wasn't, you know, as visible on our bookshelves uh, until more recently. So that's wow. what I, I'm enjoying. Now, can you offer any tips for any writers interested in participating in NaNoWriMo? What yeah. are some practices that are helpful? One thing I would say is um, the difference for me between 2012 and 2013, where you know, the, my first attempt and I you know, didn't get very far, and my second attempt was a community. Um, mm -hmm. so I, you know, attempted it alone on my, you know, the first time around and the second time I looked for other people who were also writing, who can be like an encouragement and a support. So I happened to find um, an online group that had a boot camp. So sometimes you'll see mm -hmm. groups that 
either, you know, boot camps or, you know, you report your kind of like accountability groups. Like you just basically mm -hmm. re report your word count each day, cheer each other on, um, you know, and try to like have these goals, and, like, you know, motivational little quotes to each other every day. That was really helpful. Um, you know, there are other places where, you know, you might just get together with a group of friends. Um, mm -hmm. All of the the regions, they call them with NaNoWriMo, they have um, uh, regions all across the country. They try to do meetups. Um, mm -hmm. I've never been to any of the in-person ones, but they I know they've been doing virtual ones and I get their emails. So I think that that's a big part of it is not to try to do it by yourself. Um, and then so the wait other, a minute. when you oh. sign up, you can you you can tap into those groups when you sign up. Yeah. Okay. So when you go on the NaNoWriMo website, and you create an account, um, you make a project, they'll ask you kind of where you are and you'll be able to join message boards from different parts of the country. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, whether you actually talk to those people or not, you can at least see if, have a place where you could ask questions, get suggestions. Um, and again, they there are, there are ways to connect with people if you want to just be encouraging. They also have a feature uh, on the website where you can have a buddy. So somebody else whose um, stats you kind of see on your little dashboard and you can kind of root them on and they can root you on too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And I interrupt but, uh, you. Any other tips? No, no. I, the, the other okay. only thing I was going to say was, um, you know, planning is helpful, but it's not necessary. And the, the main girl, goal is to get the words on the page. So I think sometimes what slows us down when we're um, – you know, we're writing uh, like an, an, a, our regular routine is um, you kind of will get stuck on like these like um, research questions or like you wanting to get something, you know, exactly right. And mm -hmm. one of the nice things about NaNoWriMo is that it kind of frees you be because you don't really have the time to worry about those details. So you can put mm -hmm. a placeholder in your manuscript and like, you know, I, I use brackets. So sometimes I'll put bracket and put name of town <laughs> because I don't want to spend 15, 20 minutes thinking about what I want to call this town. And so I'll just, you know, leave a placeholder or I'll write a placeholder for, you know, maybe something that hap needs to happen in between a scene and then just keep going. So kind of that idea of, um, you know, forward progress is the most important thing. Um, not to let yourself get caught off uh, with, you know, going down other kind of rabbit holes that can distract you. Right. And then the other thing is that we sometimes they talk about the um, the inner editor. So inside of our heads, we have that voice that will say, you know, well, that's not, you know, the best that you can do or, you know, you can, you know, change this or that. And, you know, it's just like having to learn to shut that off for a while and say, this can be awful and it can nobody has to see it and <laughs> just mm -hmm. get words down on the page and you can you can fix it later, but you can't fix anything that you haven't written. So that's a big goal. <laughs> right. I love those ideas because I do myself tend to get go down rabbit holes or I'll research and go, oh, this is interesting. And I'll be spending all this time looking up information about something, wasting my writing time. Yes. My mm -hmm. one of my rabbit holes is the thesaurus. So I'll I'll look for the right word. Right. And I could spend, you know, I could spend 20, 30 minutes looking at like different thesaurus options for words. Right, to make it pretty, to get the right. prettiest one. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, sometimes I tell my students that, um, you know, there are all these suggestions that you can use to keep that forward motion going. So one of those things is if you're a person who needs to edit or you just like have to keep thinking about like these being precise, to use it as a reward. So set your a word count that you need to meet. And then after you've met your daily word count, let yourself do the other thing that, you know, is calling to you. So let yourself use the thesaurus or let yourself go back and, you know, line edit, <laughs> but try right. to make your goal. <laughs> now, Lisa, you mentioned that um, the students who were in the class with you when you wrote the first manuscript are now high school seniors. Mm -hmm. Do yeah, they, they know... No, are they graduates or seniors? Yeah, they graduated this past spring. Okay, so how did they react when they found out that this book is being published, or do they? Any of them know? They, I, I think they may have heard, but I left that school district, so oh, okay. um, I'm still in contact with like some of my teacher colleagues um, when I used to live in Kentucky. So that was, um, so that was there. So I haven't seen them in seven oh, years. Where did you live in Kentucky? Where did you live in Louisville? 
Oh, Louisville. I remember you saying that. Okay, yeah, because yeah. I'm from, I, I was born and raised in Louisville. Oh, okay. okay. I think I do remember that. Yeah, I lived you there bitch, 20, you put that on 21 Twitter years. Yeah, yeah, I was 21 years at the that school. What school so. were you at? It was, a, it's an independent school, kind of like also where I'm at now. So it was Kentucky Country Day, right in Louisville. I've heard of that school. Because um, yeah. that's out in the East End or something, because mm -hmm. I went to Cameron Middle School. Yeah. And I I've heard Cameron. of that. I have heard of that. Oh, that's sweet. <laughs> yep. And see, you're the perfect example when kids say what they learn in school isn't useful in life. You <laughs> took what you taught them and you're getting your book published. So Yeah, it's, it's exciting. And I have um, a lot of students who um, like to, I mean, love to write. And so, you know, I teach sixth grade also. And I don't do the project with my sixth graders because we have, you know, another curriculum, but a lot of times we'll ask the sixth grade, what's their, you know, what are, was their favorite writing experience? And so many of them will, um, will say doing NaNoWriMo was one of their favorite writing experiences. Yeah, because you're really making this real. And I know when I was that age, I never really even could fathom that I could write a book or that that was an option. So this is really wonderful that you're, opening that door for the kids and showing that to them. Yeah, it's been great. And I think since, um, you know, I've been doing this for a while, but, you know, my publication deal and all of that has only happened in the last two to, you know, three years. And so, you know, that's been interesting to share with, with students too, just the, you know, how it works. Like, how do you become a working writer? How does, how does a book idea turn into something that's actually on a shelf of a bookstore and, um, so yeah, try to work in all sorts of different knowledge for them. Okay, well, this is wonderful. Now, do you have any parting thoughts for the authors here? Or I have some young, young people, people interested in writing their own book or writing a novel? Yeah, I, so I would say, um, you know, if they're a young person, um, or if you're the parent or guardian of somebody who's young, um, the NaNoWriMo Young Writers Program is available to any kid. It's free. Um, you go to the website, it's YWP, so Young Writers Program, ywp.nanorimo.org. And, you know, kids can sign up for their own accounts. Teachers can sign up for class accounts. Um, they also have resources for parents and families that are free. Um, and I actually would recommend if you're a writer and you're kind of not sure how to organize yourself for NaNoWriMo, um, go to that young writer's site and look for the educators resources because there are free workbooks that they, they, they have one for elementary, middle school and high school and mm -hmm. the high school, middle school, high school book work, works for adults too. So right. you could use that and do a lot of the prompts and uh, kind of follow the guidelines. So that's free. Um, but there's other, as I said, other groups that are, you know, people looking for buddies and accountability uh, you know, partners for NaNoWriMo, and I would just, you know, seek those out. Um, I think one last thing, too, is um, NaNoWriMo, the organization, often will have um, pep talks, so mm -hmm. authors will come on and give some motivational advice, um, and they offer sprints. Sprints are when you just, like, sign on for a period of time, maybe on Twitter, and you say what your, your word count goal is, and you just write, and, you know, you're not doing anything with the other people, but you know that other people are there online writing at the same time. So mm -hmm. all of those sorts of community activities are great things to participate in in November. That sounds good. So tell them, put that turkey leg down, and <laughs> get that laptop. <laughs> right. <laughs> tell your family to, you'll get, come get the turkey. You've got to write for a, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lisa, for joining me. I appreciate you taking this time and sharing this information with us all. And best wishes with the book. And again, when is your book coming out? Thank when can you. We so it comes out on February 8th of 2022 with HarperCollins Quill Tree Books. So okay. it's available for pre order <laughs> Okay. And where can they find you? Um, I'm on Instagram, obviously, and Twitter. Um, my handle is the same on both. It's Engage Readers, at Engage Readers. Um, and also my website is lisastringfellow.com. Okay, great. Well, thank you for joining us, Lisa. Thank you guys for tuning in. And I look forward to seeing you again next time for an exciting episode of Write This. Thank Bye -bye. you for having me. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.